just a little bit about who I am. Um, I, most of my career I've been in advertising, uh, working for an international big agency called Gray. And then uh, in 2005, it was bought by WPP. So that's when I started my own agency called We, which is an independent agency. And we stand for the best of East Midwest. That's why I'm here. And for many years, I have to say that um, I was educated um, uh, in the US. I uh, was born in Hong Kong. But well, I, I was the first generation of advertising professional to go into China back in 1989. So most of these international brands uh, like Procter & Gamble, Smith & Beecham, Danone, whatever, uh, Nokia, I brought them into China. And those were the days when really we brought the best of the West practice into China. Um, and over the years, I have um, expanded and first went to do social media, uh, e-commerce, etc. And today we offer kind of a, a total solution from corporate strategy to integrated marketing communication to e-commerce, et cetera. So what's happened is that, yes, the last 30 years, I've brought in international bright practice, Western bright practice into China. But I think what's happened in the last 10 years is the reverse. China is actually getting much more sophisticated in digital um, marketing. And this is what I want to share. So actually, my topic is wake up to digital innovation in China. Um, we all heard about um, Double Eleven, which is the biggest shopping festival ever in history. And it's more than double like, like Black Friday because it's turned into a festival. And the reason is because um, actually Alibaba is, I think, extremely sophisticated right now. I would say maybe even more sophisticated than Amazon because they've linked up everything from your, 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 the time you, you attract you to your e-shopping, to logistics, to data, to a totally eco, uh, total ecosystem. Same with the competitor Tencent. And if we talked about a lot of big data, Tencent have all your data. Because, from, because everybody is using it from WeChat to, um, to finding yourself in terms of the map, in terms of ordering your, your dinner, uh, music, etc. So they have, or play games, so they tag everything. They know what you're doing and also your mobile phone. So what we say in China, if you talk about online to offline, it's probably out of date. We don't talk about O2O anymore. We talk about the, the convergence of on and offline. Um, so it is not just on, uh, you, you, you have your app drive, you do the store. It is the integration of everything from logistics to your demand to, to later the data and the retargeting. So for example, a good example, um, I don't know how many of you know about this, is uh, owned by Alibaba. They are all going now to, to create physical stores, just like Amazon buy Whole Foods. The difference though is this store from Alibaba not only um, it's a cashless store. Um, they also sell all kinds of seafood because people are too lazy to cook. You can have the seafood, choose what you want. You can even eat it there. Someone will cook it for you. Um, you can scan whatever you want. And no need, can, is it, um, you, know, you don't have to bring your wallet. It can be delivered to you within 30 minutes. Um, this is a, a, the, a very traditional hot pot restaurant, you know, hot pot restaurant. So they are very famous for the service, but what they've done is now all robotic. So it's, but they never gave up the service though. It's the back end kitchen that's all done by robots. You have robots giving you the food and they have an interactive center when you wait because it's a very popular restaurant, you can play interactive games with each other. So, and everything is data driven. So what they address is the biggest issue, food safety, because it's all robots, it's clean. So they can leave the humans on the floor to service you. So this is what is happening. So we believe that today's, if you want to do marketing, it's like what we do, it's not good enough to have all the things I just described. So we're mo we must be data driven, we must be tech enabled, have creative ideas and drive business growth. At the end, it's all about driving business growth. So um, we use a lot of AI, so we work with an AI company that use AI to turn everything they can learn into, uh, to predict product innovation, trend innovation, et cetera. Why do we have to use AI? Because people are not writing words anymore. They're posting a video, they, they, they take a picture. So AI can use deep neural learning to know if you have this coffee 
what other things are you with? What is the brand association? What is the context without having you say any? Are you happy or are you sad? So they can, we can understand the consumer, the brand logo, the precious intent. So that, for example, this is a prediction for KFC. They want to know what uh, flavor of burger they should make. So they found that the people are most interested in Mexican flavor, lobster, frugua, but they're very interesting, hip hop beef. There's nothing called hip hop beef, right? But it is a lifestyle, so it's very inspirational. They can also do brand association. So what is the most relevant interest? Oh, people who buy your brand drink beer, coffee. The most relevant brands to your brand, so you can do co-marketing. And we, what we do is we lump all this and we, we develop this um, ecosystem. Whatever you use, whatever your touch point, is it WeChat, is it stores, is it point of sale system, how can we gather all that data into a, your complete view of the user, 360 degree, and retag them and continuous program and so you know how to duplicate your most valuable consumers. And then we have a 360 degree view of them. So it's driving them from awareness, acquisition, retention, and going back to referrals. A good example of all this is last year, we launched this brand for a client called Luck in Coffee. For the first time, a Chinese brand challenged Starbucks and became a real challenger. It became the number two brand and beat out every other brand like Costa Coffee within six months. Within one month, from January um, 28, uh, 9, 2018 to end of December, they from zero stores to 2,000 stores. Um, and what we did is we positioned the brand as a challenger and we say we are not the third place. The third place is out of date. We are any moment. Because we, are, we have better quality coffee, we are more affordable, they're $38, we're 20, 24 RMB, and we're more accessible because we're everywhere. The reason is because we have mostly is all these small counters. We don't, you don't need to go to the coffee because we save the rent, the coffee is coming to you. So um, uh, the, other, the, the key is you cannot go, even if you go to the store, you cannot buy with cash. You have to buy through the app. With the app, we have all the data. We know where you are, who's buying, and who's not buying. So we use the app uh, to location you, and if you don't get, you can also bring your coffee in. We know where you are, so we can, we say any moment, we, if you're in a place like this, we said you're in conference, why don't you get a coffee? You must be very tired having listened to a whole day. It will be delivered to you 30 minutes or free. So it, we create the brand world. It's all, uh, if they're green, we're blue. Uh, we use celebrity to do the advertising, and here is an example. Oh, we don't have So these are two very famous celebrities. Um, so we create that upscale image more than contemporary. Lucky coffee. So it was a case study of the year because it was the first time to challenge Starbucks. The other thing is the most powerful is we you know is social referral. So whenever you download the app, you get a free drink. If you forward this coupon, you will give a free coupon for your friend. If your friend download and order their first cup, they get a free coffee and you get one too. So we use this viral, very effective to get lots of customers. And then, uh, you know, lots of mobile advertising. So it became, and, and now Starbucks have to change to the way they operate. They have to start free delivery as well. So this is the reverse, Starbucks following us. What, what will be changing? 5G. 5G is going to change everything because it's no longer just using your mobile, it's internet of things and so on. So right now there's a lot of interest in actually in Huawei and how they're going to use 5G to change the way we communicate. So there are many examples. I only have 10 minutes. My 10 minutes is up. Thank you very much. But, you know, I'd love to share with you a lot more Chinese innovation. And I'm part of, um, and Dinah uh, has helped us last year, two years ago, right? We have uh, what we call ECI Business Innovation Awards that recognizes innovation, um, business model innovation, marketing innovation, whatever. And we will bring more and more of these cases in. And I hope we will work with Ding Ding more to show you all the China innovation. Thank you. Thank you.